All right. So, my name's Justin, uh, Justin Marsh, and I like to spend my time trying to figure out the nature of reality. Um, it's changed throughout my life. Uh, when I was younger, um, like in elementary, I fancied the idea of being an inventor. I liked the idea of creating a perpetual energy machine or something like that. But of course, I wasn't smart enough for any of that. Just dreams. Um, or maybe I might be smart enough, but it was never applied. So anyway. Um, and then I grew up a little bit more. I'm still in elementary. And I fell more in love with space. You know, stars and how they are formed. And giant masses of gas that condense over time and form stars by um, such a heavy pool of gravity and mass that um, the atoms fuse together. I think it's two hydrogens, a helium, if I'm, I may be right. And uh, all the um, elements of the universe get formed inside the star and form heavier and heavier and more dense elements um, until in some stars eventually gold is formed and there's a supernova and um, that launches the material across space and so it would be it would litter into like one of our like our solar system and after the star is formed there, the um, dust particles and the, all the matter, like rocks and stuff like that, um, over time coalesced into each other in the process of rotation and everything and how it's hit. Uh, eventually it forms a sphere. Uh, our planet was hit by a planet near the size of Mars and it hit right at the perfect sweet spot to form our oceans and with it we gained extra iron core and the uh, extra matter coalesced around our planet to form the moon now the moon isn't the largest moon in the solar system but it is the largest in comparison to its host planet um, but yeah, I really loved astrology when I was younger. Um, not much of my knowledge came from reading. I'm very visual and auditory. So I would do good in classes. I can like pass a test if I was napping and listening. <laughs> and uh, most of my modern education has come, well, I mean, recent education has come from audiobooks or, or YouTube. I actually do would say I'm lacking in actually reading, unless it's online, I could read for hours and hours, but it's from w between one um, topic to another, going deeper and deeper. Like, you find, you read something, and then I don't understand that, so I start looking up that, and then going deeper and deeper, follow the names. Almost like I'm doing a research report, but I'm just, I'm curious, I'm curious. Um, Eventually, at some point, uh, I had a friend that showed me quantum physics, and I, f I found that very interesting because there's a lot of stuff that went around, that went on on a, on the um, micro scale that just didn't make sense and was kind of um, supernatural and or spiritual in nature. Like the kind of conclusions you come to on, on that level. The um, particles being in two places at once, the um, parallel dimensions, the frequencies and of uh, energy and everything, and the fact that there is no such thing as me or you, everything is one, we are all but energy and vibration. That helped me increase my perspective, but I realized all I really wanted to know is understand the nature of reality. That's what I really care about. And I care about 
those people around me that are mine. There are certain people that I accept into my life. And uh, most people I'm distanced from. You can't devote all your energy to everybody in the world. And um, most of us don't have much resources for that anyway. But what I can do is make a plan to grow and be better for my children and my grandchildren and my family. So my in-group is my family and my out-group is everyone else. I have to care less what happens to anyone else because I have to be honest. The only ones I would fight and die for are my own. And that doesn't necessarily need to be blood, but it requires that you would be willing to fight and die for me. Um, but I really am in love with the idea of understanding the nature of reality. But yes, um, my focus has always been on understanding the nature of reality. Uh, when I hit uh, high school, I took AP classes. One class I took, uh, AP Human Geography, uh, opened me up to linguistic trees, like the Indo, uh, Indo-European uh, language family tree, which connects from India to Europe, and from languages, which I would try to learn and understand, I jumped into the foundation of that, which is culture and the foundation of culture, which is religion. I was always really in love with history and military history too, for the fact that I want to understand how things historically have happened. And, you know, the battles and the strategies people took to creating a society and how it worked, because we do need something better than what we currently have. But you can't do that without understanding how we got to where we are. And many of us are in the world that we're in because the elites have figured out how to keep us unconscious and docile. And I guess that is fine. Because in the end, you go to war, you die, and the same people amass at the top. It really doesn't matter. So what it comes down to in survivability, the best approach is to preserve what you know to be true in your own heart. Because... If you preserve what you know to be true in your own heart, you follow that little voice in your head that tells you that you should be doing something, and you do it, well, then that voice grows louder. And you gain more of an ability to be in tune with that unconscious will of yours to do good and to do well. If you preserve your culture and what you've learned from this life in such a way you can pass it on to the next generations, you make a survivability, you make a group, you are committed to it, then that group can grow into something with an ability to form a new world. Judaism is the perfect example. They're both a race and a religion. And that's because they've created a central ideology. And they said, if you believe this, you can be one of us. But you are only one of us if your mother is a Jew. And they have their rabbis, their scholars, and they revere them. And they study their texts very thoroughly. They support each other. They have a network. They have signs and seasons and holidays and remembrances of past times and they never forget. And so they can grow. 
can get nowhere with the mindset that we've been provided by media. That we're all individual automatons able to do things on our own when we are not. Nothing can be done on your own. And no real project can be done with a considerable amount of investment. You need a certain amount of loss before you get return. We are being raised to be dull, raised to be employees, raised to never figure out our way out. While they inflate the currency and sell out the country below our feet, they sell it to the banks and institute a technocracy. So much information makes the heart grow weak and weary. And there's much about the world the way it is that is truly depressing. But the world, even though it could probably be equivalent to hell, it, um, it's what you make it. There are certain paths you can follow, and there's one that goes to hell and one that goes to heaven. And I don't know about the afterlife. The thing is, is if the truth of your intentions and your darkest nature is revealed and you understand it, and you still follow to the greatest light, and you follow to that greatest version of truth in your mind, and you speak what you do, and you do what you speak, and you enact your vision into the world, you accept your failures and you continue persistently moving, then you'll achieve a certain level of self-satisfaction with what you've done, and you can be happy with what you have. Because true happiness does not come by having the things that make you happy. True happiness comes by being happy with whatever you have and being grateful and knowing that really what are you worthy of? I don't feel myself worthy of anything. I've received everything in this life and I don't deserve a single piece of it. My intelligence is not my own. I received it. Most of the things I have revelations about come to my mind and it's not as if it, w it was like thinking it's all at once and from somewhere else and that's those revelations it's not for me and I really don't think that much of the advancement in society ever was some of the greatest scientists attribute their success to alchemy and uh, religious practices that are of the, of the occult connected to hermeticism and hermeticism connected to Kabbalah and Kabbalah connected to uh, near eastern religions and their magic systems. I'm very intrigued in the stages that humans took to get to the modern level of understanding that we have. Because though we have a very intellectual and a very precise analytical way of seeing the world in the modern age, it's very much manipulated because all we have done is given new people with coats to be the priest class, but now they're the white coats, the scientists. That are smart enough to interpret the data, which that is not the way that it is. And it's not even the scientists that are telling us the reporting of their findings. It's corporations that are advancing certain scientists' work who are paid to come up with a certain conclusion. Our world is going towards an uh, authoritarianism one world government, AI is taking control of all things, algorithms and the intelligent 
class is seizing control of every corner of this planet. And if we have any hope, we need to cling to the spirit of knowledge and why knowledge is created in the first place, to what aim. We need to bring back the animism. You need to resurrect the corpse of tradition. Science was always connected with philosophy, religion, astrology, art. It was all the same manifestation in the worship of God and by various different faiths. That's what it is. And science needs to have a usefulness in the application to a human life. The yogic sciences are sciences because they are a practice that in the practice itself produces results which bring health and well-being. It is a tool and a machine and science could be should be seen this way. And the most important thing to change right now is your own mind and your own perspective. If everyone was able to do individual change, the world would be far different. You can never change another person's life because you have not even changed your own. It's a lifelong mission to do so. And even at the end of your life, you are not done. In life, there are many tasks that take longer than your life to do. But the difference between those who do it and those who don't is success. You succeed when you follow impossible tasks. You may not finish the task, but you do far better than the one that wallowed in self-pity and did nothing. I could speak from experience on that too. I dream after that which is not, that which is not currently my reality, to come true by the light, by persistent observance, by the exercising of my passions. I want to see a divine truth. I want to follow the light onto a new horizon. I want to see the divinity lead me towards my success. And most of all, I want to provide for my children. I want to live in this world be able to die and pass on. I want to do well for my family. Well, that is all. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And I will try to make more.